Hey, in this video, we're looking at how to write equilibrium constant expressions or k-value expressions for equilibrium reactions. So a k-value expression is just this. It's a way to quantify equilibrium based on reactant and product concentrations. And it generally describes how much product there is compared to how much reactant there is. And we'll see that here in a minute when we actually write out some equilibrium expressions. A really big K value will tell you that the reaction favors mostly the products. In other words, at equilibrium, there's more products than reactants. And a really small K value, much less than one, tells you that the reaction favors the reactants more. In other words, at equilibrium, there's more of the reactants present compared to the amount of products. Now, at this point, we should know that at equilibrium, there is not an equal amount of products and reactants. What is true, though, is that their forward rate, or the rate at which reactants convert to products, is equal to the backwards rate, or reverse rate, or the rate at which products convert back into reactants. So all this k-value is doing is telling us where is that equilibrium located? Is it favoring more of the products or favoring more of the reactants? The equilibrium constant is also a constant for a given reaction, but only at a given temperature. So if you change the temperature at which a reaction is taking place, then that k-value is going to change. So whenever we look at a k-value, we're looking at a given temperature. So let's look at a few examples. Our first example is this. We have two nitrogen monoxide gas plus bromine gas in equilibrium with two NOBr gas. In other words, there's two gas molecules that combine to form one gas molecule there on the right, but then that one gas molecule can decompose back into NO and Br2. And so we have this existing at an equilibrium. So let's write our equilibrium constant. And it's really simple to do. All you do is you take the products, raise them to the power of their coefficients, divide by the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. So let's take a look at this example here. We start off with this NOBr to the power of two because we have a coefficient of two right here, which is where that squared comes from. And that's our only product, so that's the only thing on our numerator here. And then we'll take NO, concentration of NO to the power of two, times concentration of Br2, just to the power of one, so we don't need to write that power um, of one right there. Now, you notice I put these in brackets. Remember, the presence of the brackets just tells you that these are concentrations. We're looking at the molarity of each of these reactants and products at equilibrium. And that's what we would actually substitute into this to calculate our K value. Let's say at equilibrium, we knew the concentration of NOBr was 0.1 molar. We would substitute in 0.1 molar here, substitute in the molarities of the other two, and then we could calculate our K value for that reaction. Now, because we're using concentrations here, often for the K value, we might designate that it's K sub C. If you ever see that, that just signifies that this is concentration. We can also write an equilibrium expression in terms of pressures or partial pressures of gases. So we'll take a look at that example here. For this reaction, since we have everything as a gas, gas here, gas there, gas over here, we could write the, our KC expression that we just did there, or we could write a KP expression based on the partial pressures. Both of them are a way to quantify the, the equilibrium of this reaction. So let's write this out in terms of partial pressures and take a look at that as well. So we have K sub P equals the partial pressure of NOBr squared. Notice we're following the same pattern as we did before. We're taking that product, raise it to the power of its coefficient. The P there just means the pressure or the partial pressure of that gas divided by, and then we'll just do the partial pressure of NO to the power of two and the partial pressure of Br2 to the power of one, since there's only one of those in the reaction. Now the KP expression is a little less common. More often than not, we'll talk in terms of concentrations, but if we ever need it, we can do this in terms of partial pressures as well, if that fits our purposes a little bit better. So there's our answer for our equilibrium constant expression, or our K expression, K equals NOBr squared, divided by concentration of NO squared, divided by concentration of Br2. All right, let's take a look at another example now. There's a special rule that we need to look at here, and that's that for equilibrium constant expressions, we only include states of matter that can be expressed as a concentration. And that's gonna be gases and solutions, or whenever you see that subscript AQ for aqueous. Our next example is this. Two potassium chlorate solid decomposes into two KCl, or potassium chloride solid, plus three oxygen gas. Now, when we look at all three of these, we know gas gases we can express in terms of molarity. We, we can also express them in terms of pressure, but molarity is a total possibility there. We can take the moles of gas divided by the volume that it takes up. 
Solids, though, we never really talk about solids in terms of concentration. We talk about solids in terms of amounts. We have 10 grams of this solid, for example. So whenever we write our equilibrium expressions, remember, equilibrium expressions are just a way to quantify the equilibrium, but we won't include solids because we don't have any concentrations that we can substitute in for our quantified K values, and so we just won't include the solids. We also won't include liquids. We'll see that in the next example. So let's go ahead and write out our equilibrium expression here. So K equals, and we'll start with the products. We have three O2 gases, and so we'll take that O2 gas raised to the power of three. Our KCl is a solid though, so we won't include that. We'll divide this whole thing by, well, nothing, because uh, on our reactants, we just have a solid there, and we don't include the solids. So it's not divided by anything. So we just don't have that um, horizontal line for the division there. So our equilibrium expression is just K equals the concentration of O2 cubed. And that would be our final answer for that one. All right, let's take a look at one more example here. So this is example three. So here we have liquid H2O or water, and that can break down into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And water actually does this. It produces a small amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, and that's where our pH scale comes from and acidity and all of that. But for this, let's just write our equilibrium constant expression. So we'll start with our, our products. We have H plus or hydrogen ions. So we'll write a concentration of H plus to the power of one because there's no coefficient there times hydroxide ions to the power of one again because there's no um, coefficient there divided by well liquid water remember liquid water because it's a pure liquid we're not going to talk about it in terms of concentration and so that we won't include in our equilibrium expression and so that would be our answer k equals hydrogen ion concentration times concentration of hydroxide ions now this particular one we often use a little w there because it's specifically for water and that's kind of a special k value it's actually equal to 10 to the negative 14th at um, standard temperature and pressure and that negative 14 is where our ph scale of 14 comes from so that's kind of a special one we sometimes use the w on there but that's how we write an equilibrium constant expression for a reaction remember you just take the products raised to the power of the coefficients divided by the reactants raised to the power of their coefficients but you don't include solids you don't include pure liquids. You only include gases and aqueous compounds. And finally, we can represent a KP expression as well if we want to represent all of this, not in terms of concentration, but in terms of the partial pressures of the gases involved. All right, that's it for this video. Have fun writing equilibrium constant expressions.